Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Grace Tabernacle members and friends. So glad that you have chosen to join in with us on this Sunday, uh, July 23rd, 2023. Thank you for choosing to worship with the Grace Tabernacle Church family, and we're so glad that you made this choice. Uh, so let us be brief, let us get to the point, and let us go through our routine, and which we usually do. We uh, start with our mission statement, and so we'd like to ask all members and friends to stand uh, and to repeat after me, our, or should I say we all do it collectively, not repeat, but we'll do it collectively. It says the Grace Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church is commissioned to reach the unsaved, restore the unchurched, and make disciples within the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Uh, we are committed to evangelizing sinners, equipping saints, and elevating society by responding biblically to, biblically to the challenges face, uh, facing uh, all members of our society. Our ultimate goal is to be a biblical model that glorifies God and expresses the love of Jesus Christ and impacts the world through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for giving us a mission statement, something that can only be accomplished through the total participation of every member those who are presently members, those who will even be forthcoming. But it can only be done with, with all of our participation and act, activity. So uh, that is that mission statement today, and we thank God for that. Well, I'll let you go get started to, for what we come to do. And I'll be brief as I usually am on the word today. Uh, uh, is found over in Romans, the 12th chapter, and I'll read starting at the 19th verse. And it says this in Romans uh, uh, 12, uh, starting in the 19th verse. It says, uh, uh, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, said the Lord. On the contrary, verse uh, 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he uh, is thirsty, give him something to drink. Uh, in doing this, you will heat a burning coal on his head. Do not overcome him. Uh, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I want to talk today about the proper response to being mistreated. What is the proper response to being mistreated? One of the things that I believe we all have in common is that we all have been mistreated. We all have uh, been uh, uh, abused uh, or just overlooked or just been mistreated in this life. It comes along in life that as long as you are uh, a citizen of a uh, resident of the human race, you stand the risk of being mistreated, amen, that you stand the risk of not being treated appropriately. So uh, we will uh, just uh, start uh, with that idea that we all have that in common, that we all have been mistreated. Now the Apostle Paul tells the Romans what is the way to deal with being mistreated, and he gives three things that we can do when we are mistreated. Number one, look at verse 19 says, he says, look at 9, verse 19 says, um, 
do not take revenge, my dear friend, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, my, uh, it is written that vengeance, uh, or should I say, leave room for God's wrath, but it is written, mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. What it said is do something spiritual. Do something spiritual by not taking revenge. Amen. Amen. That is the most spiritual thing you can do. Is that when you are offended, is not go tick for tack, but do that which is spiritual. Amen. To not avenge it. Because the reason why is because God said that you don't have to take revenge because I take revenge. He says, touch not my anointed one, which means that when, when somebody, amen, treats me or mistreats me, God has my back. That God, amen, will, will, will switch is bigger than mine. Amen. The whooping that God would put on your enemy is nothing like what you could do. Amen. God's switch is bigger and it lasts longer. Amen. Than any whooping you can put on your enemy. Amen. And so he says, leave room, amen, for me to avenge. I, will, I got your back. You don't have to worry about it. It reminds me that when I was a little boy and I would get in a fight, uh, not when I would be in the fight, I'd be looking uh, uh, over my enemy's shoulders, waiting for uh, one of my uh, good old friends, the Mac Peter. They were uh, the toughest guys in the neighborhood. And I knew that if I got in the fight, that he would take up for me. And I wouldn't, instead of just fighting, I would be looking for him to come and take my take up my slap, amen, because he was bigger and badder than me. And that's what you can do with God. God said, listen, that when you get mistreated, you don't have to fight, amen. Just know that I will got your back. I will avenge those who mistreat you. And so do something spiritual because you have somebody on your side that is bigger than your offender. Amen. And can do much more damage than you could ever do. So the first thing when you're mistreated is to do the spiritual. Do, uh, that, yeah, don't go tick for tack but leave room for God to avenge you. Amen. That's in verse 19. Verse 20 says this. Verse 20 says that consequently whoever, oh no, I'm sorry. But uh, 20 says on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to, to go to drink. Amen. The first thing he tells us to do is do something spiritual, but next thing he says to feed him or to do something that's practical. Do something that's practical to your enemy. Amen. Do something practical. And the one thing that everybody has is a need. Amen. In other words, that when you are, you have been mistreated, uh, meet the need of your, your offender. Amen. Everyone has a need. That's one thing that uh, we all have is some needs. And the, the thing is to research the enemy or your offender and see what his needs are and give him what he needs. Amen. Amen. And what? And by doing so, Scripture says that you heap coal over his head. Amen. You leave him wondering why your action is of such instead of uh, uh, being aggressive toward him, that you are, you are nice and you meet a need. Amen. So you do something very practical. You feed him. Amen. Or if he starts to give him something to drink. 
Amen. And that amen will heap a coal over him. It will deal with his conscience. Amen. And God will deal with it from there. From there. So everybody has something they can do or have a need they can heal their offender. And so the first the first thing is to do something spiritual. The second thing is to do something practical. But thirdly, look at verse 21. Verse 21 says, Do not overcome evil by evil, but overcome evil with good. So not do, the first thing is to do something spiritual. Do not take revenge. The second is to do something practical. Feed him, give him something to drink. And the third thing is to do something abnormal. Amen. That means to overcome uh, 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 evil by doing that which is good. Amen. Do not allow evil to make you take sides with it. Amen. And so we are encouraged not to be on the side of evil by doing evil to the uh, person who have offended us. But, but do something that's spiritual. Amen. And by doing that, amen, you defeat evil by doing that which is good. Amen. And so those are the three things, amen, we can do when, amen, we have been mistreated. First, do something spiritual. Secondly, do something practical. And thirdly, do something abnormal. Do not be overcome with evil with evil, but do good when you have been done wrong. Amen. And so those are the three things that we can do to come to overcome. Amen. When we've been mistreated. And I hope. Amen. And in the end, God should get the glory out of our lives when we do those things. Amen. That is subculture. Amen. That we don't do what the normal culture do, but we are to do things that are subculture. That's what Christianity is, is we are subculture. We are not to do as the culture does, but we are to do that which is better. And so that's how, how we respond to being mistreated. Those are three things, three things that we can all do, some spiritual, some practical, something at known. And so I end that the word of the day. But that is how we defeat. Amen. Being being mistreated. Amen. Is by doing something which is amen. Spiritual, that which is practical, that which is at known. And we give the Apostle Paul the credit for giving that those words of encouragement when we are mistreated. Let's give God a hand clap of praise on how how to respond when we've been mistreated. Well, that's it for this Sunday. Amen. I want to encourage you to listen to us for next Sunday to hear a word from, from God. Also, uh, you can hear us on, on YouTube. Amen. And on Facebook Live. And so I want to encourage you to uh, attend next Sunday. Same time, same uh, uh, place, Facebook Live, YouTube, amen. And then I also want to encourage you, if you have not given to give, amen, that the church uh, has needs, uh, and it can all those needs are to be met through our tithes and offerings. If you not, have not given, please give, amen. And also I want to encourage us to attend prayer meeting on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Please attend the seven o'clock on uh, on the we have had that information on on the uh, on the screen right on how uh, on prayer meeting on Zoom on Wednesday at seven p.m. Uh, you get the the, uh, the ID and the password. Amen. On Zoom at seven o'clock, I want to encourage us to continue in our prayer meeting. Matter of fact, it is easy, more easier to access than even attending, physically attending. 
you can attend on Zoom. So I want to encourage you to do all three of those. Attend next Sunday, deal, amen, and pray on Zoom on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. See you next Sunday. Amen, amen, and amen. That's it.